Now, this is not to say that penetration by Russian state operatives into the networks of the power companies would just go unnoticed, but it might not get noticed until long after the fact. And regular security sweeps of the network might not notice it as it was happening. The other reason I think penetrating the electricity networks of uh, power companies across the United States for the purposes of electoral interference would be um, uh, an opportune thing for the Russians to do is when do elections take place in the United States for the most part? November and June. June it's hot, November it's cold. Because of weather, there are power outages occurring anyway that don't have anything to do with anybody hacking anything. In July 2015, right here in Long Beach, we had a three-day power outage because of an incorrectly spliced cable from Southern California Edison left tens of thousands of people in Long Beach without power for three days. All three days were over 100. As summers get hotter and winters get more severe, there's going to be power outages. So I, it wouldn't necessarily be considered unusual or anything out of the ordinary for the week of an election or the day of an election there to be a power outage in a place in like back east where it was going to be freezing weather anyway or out here on the west coast in June where it was going to be hot as hell anyway. So that's another way that it might go unnoticed or not noticed at the time that it happens. But once a vote is finalized, it's finalized, right? That's how we do things here in the United States. So it, you, you, you couldn't go back after you found out, oh, these people couldn't vote because Russians turned off the power in, the, in certain polling places to make it so that uh, DNC-leaning districts couldn't vote. You can't go back and invalidate the vote because of that, because that's not how we do things. 